Hi, today we will learn about nitric acid which is uh, also known as aqua fortis which means it is strong water. What does it mean? Because it is one of the highly corrosive mineral acid. And the formula for nitric acid is HNO3. So that is the formula, highly corrosive. So it's known as strong water. The other name is aquafortis. Now today we will look into the laboratory method of preparation. What is the reaction about? Take one salt, that is salt 1, plus a non volatile or least volatile acid would give salt 2 plus a volatile acid. So what happens? This non-volatile or least volatile or less volatile acid displaces a volatile acid from its salt. Okay? And this is heated. So that is the reaction. In this case, we need nitric acid. The formula for nitric acid is HNO3. Naturally, if we need a nitrate, the salt that we need to use would be either sodium nitrate or potassium nitrate. So these are the two salts that we can use. And the non-volatile or less volatile acid is concentrated sulfuric acid. So this is the acid that we use. Now these two are heated. to give you a salt that would be sodium bisulfate plus HNO3. Here it would be potassium bisulfate plus nitric acid. Okay, so here also nitric acid is formed, here also nitric acid is formed using either of these two salts. Now that is the reaction that is happening and for this reaction to happen we need some reactants. So the next thing that we go about is about the reactants. As we see in the above there is one solid reactant okay, and a liquid reactant. Which is the solid reactant? It is either sodium nitrate or potassium nitrate and the liquid reactant is concentrated sulfuric acid because that is less volatile compared or it's the least volatile among the mineral acids. Okay, so these are the reactants and these two both the reactants the ratio should be 1 is to 1 equal measure equal amounts why we need to use it in equal amounts if we look at the reaction see there are two hydrogen atoms in sulfuric acid but one only one hydrogen is used for nitric acid so if we are going to use only half of it or twice the if sodium nitrate is going to be twice then the amount of nitric acid form will be, it will be difficult. So we need 1 is to 1 ratio in order to form nitric acid from these two reactants. Next we move on to the temperature. The temperature preferred is 
less than 200. Preferably 180 to 200 is the temperature that is preferred. Why is the temperature preferred less than 200? When the temperature is less than 200, these are the products that are formed. Okay. What happens if the temperature exceeds? What if temperature exceeds 200? There are three things that can happen. The first thing is there is wastage of fuel. Second one, if the temperature increases, then the product formed is different. Sodium nitrate plus concentrated sulfuric acid gives you sodium sulfate plus nitric acid. When the temperature is above 200. Okay. Same thing happens with potassium. You would get potassium sulfate. Now these two, sodium sulfate and potassium sulfate, they form a hard crust which is difficult to remove. So at this point there is a hard crust that is formed when the temperature increases above 200 degrees and that prevents the reaction from going to completion. That's the second one. The third one is, see this is a volatile acid. So when the temperature increases, it also results in decomposition of the acid. So what happens, this nitric acid breaks down to give nitrogen dioxide plus water plus oxygen. Okay, so decomposition happens. And the last one that we need to know about is that this apparatus is made of glass. So the apparatus can break when the temperature increases or when the temperature is above 200. So these are the reasons why we may, should maintain the temperature at less than 200 degrees. If it goes above, these are the things that will happen if it exceeds 200 degrees. So next we move on to the apparatus. Apparatus is one important thing about this apparatus is it is completely made of glass. If you notice, usually we would have a glass cog here or it would be closed with a cog. None of the places do you have such things because this is highly corrosive. Nitric acid is highly corrosive. So it can even damage the cork. Damages the cork. So we cannot use anything. It's only made of glass. So that's what the apparatus is about. Next we move on to the collection. Actually nitric acid is in the vapor state, it comes here and it is collected in a water cooled receiver, then it condenses as nitric acid. Okay, So it is collected in a water cooled receiver. That is about collection. Next we go to the important thing that is the precautions that we need to take. The first precaution that we need to take is apparatus should be all glass. The second one that we need to take is maintain the temperature.
between one eighty to two hundred degrees. So it should be below two hundred degrees. And the third one that we need to take, we use only concentrated sulfuric acid used. And concentrated HCl is not used. Why it is not used? Because this is volatile. So one volatile, both will evaporate. So one volatile acid cannot displace another volatile acid. Therefore, we should not use concentrated hydrochloric acid. So these are the three precautions that we need to take. Now the last one in this is identification. How do we know that nitric acid has been formed? Nitric acid has the nitrate ion. See, NO3 is there. And when these vapors, when this flask is taken out, and if it is slightly heated and copper turnings are brought near and added to it, then you will get reddish brown fumes. So, with copper turnings, forms reddish brown fumes that shows that the substance or the liquid that is collected here is nitric acid. The product formed is nitric acid and pure nitric acid is colorless. But when you leave it on standing, it gets an yellowish tinge. That's why in the laboratory, when you see nitric acid, it's slightly yellow in color. This is due to decomposition of nitric acid. It's volatile, so it evaporates faster and it decomposes. And so nitric acid decomposes to give you nitrogen dioxide plus water plus oxygen okay so the things that are actually formed are nitrogen dioxide which is reddish brown and when this mixes with water it gives you this yellowish tinge so this is responsible for the yellowish tinge so how to remove this this can happen in two steps, removal of the yellowish tinge. One is, this is, if this has to be removed, either of these things should be added. So the first one is bubbling oxygen through it. So when you blow in oxygen, it combines with nitrogen dioxide and water vapor, gives back the colorless nitric acid. The second one is diluting with water. This again, when water is added, it mixes up with these two, reacts and forms nitric acid. This is how we get nitric acid.